remembering things. I love pulling out. Um, this past week, um, there were some guys in a group chat that were talking about some things, and, uh, and I literally was like, Anthony said something in the group chat, and I just happened to be in the group chat. I was like, you guys want to see Anthony back in the day? And I, I, I can't, I didn't put it up here for today for you guys to see, but, but <laughs> Ashlyn, did I just get in trouble from Ashlyn? <laughs> I can't get away with anything, man. She's going to tell him. He's not even here to defend himself. Um, but, but I ended up sending a picture when he was 16 years old from high school, and he's like got a little bow tie on it. He looked like a Dorcas Malorcus, man. It was great. And I was like, guys, just so that you know what Anthony looked like back in those days. And like, I love remembering when and I think that it's a crazy thing when you stroll down memory lane that sometimes we forget that scripture actually encourages kind of going down memory lane scripture encourages us to go back and remember and he, and, he, and it actually tells us what we're supposed to remember do you know that if you go back to one of the early books in the old testament God actually encourages the children of Israel to remember. And in many ways, it's reminiscent of what Moses did when the children of Israel went into the promised land. It was a land that God had promised decades before, centuries before, that he was going to deliver the children of Israel into this promised land. And Moses knew that Israel was about to experience plenty. He knew that they were about to have a, a stark contrast of their years of wandering in the wilderness their years of wondering where God was and he wanted them to encourage them to look back and remember when remember when because I don't know about you but maybe you've been in one of those instances or those scenarios where it was hard for you to remember that God showed up then like for the children of Israel like Moses wanted them to remember that even though they were in the wilderness, every single day God provided them food. Every single day God provided them water. Every single day God provided them protection. Every day. And he knew that they were about to move into this land of plenty, which Canaan was known to be a land of plenty. And he knew that it is human nature, it's human nature, to get to where you wanted to be and forget where you used to be forget how God provided and he said we need to never ever forget so today and over the next three weeks what we're going to do is we're going to try to dig into scripture and remember when remember when God showed up remember how God showed up and I want to talk to you today as we launch into this about why is it important to remember and what are the benefits of remembering what God has done. The, the, first, the first benefit of remembering is remembering reminds us who provided for us. Remembering reminds us who's the one who provided for us. We're going to spend all day today in one chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. One chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, and then I've, gonna, I've got some other verses to just kind of spring off of from there. But we're going to spend our, the priority of our time and primarily in Deuteronomy chapter 8 here's what Moses said to the people of Israel he said but this is the time to be careful he says beware that in your plenty you don't forget the Lord your God and disobey his commandments his regulations and his decrees that I'm giving you today for when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in and when your flocks and herds have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else be careful be careful I, I believe this when we get into a season where everything seems to be easy when everything seems to be going our way when everything seems to be great we can soon forget where it came from we start thinking, man, look what, look what I've accomplished. Look what I've done. You say, Paul, that doesn't happen. Doesn't? I know it happens in my life. 
I know if you look at every, every great world power, they started off small, and the larger they got, the more they thought that where they got and what they had was of their own doing and not of what God was doing. It happens in our lives all the time. And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Moses warned the Israelites about the dangers of forgetting God in the middle of prosperity. The passage uses a couple of key Hebrew words that I want to draw out because I think they're important because I think that they, they actually dig this up even a little bit more. The word careful actually in Hebrew is the word shamar. It's the word shamar. It implies actively guarding or keeping something with great care. Actively guarding or keeping something with great care. Moses urged the Israelites to keep their relationship with God close. Much like guarding precious treasure. The word reminds the reader of the need to be vigilant, especially in times of abundance, because neglect can lead to forgetting God's role in your blessings. I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but I know that it's happened to me that like when things are going, how many of you are kind of like, some of you might be glass half full, glass half empty kind of people, but when things are going really, really good, how many of you are the type of people who go, oh man, something's about to break. How many of you are those types of people? Like something's about to go wrong. Like some of us are just like, you're just wired that way. Like you're just like, oh, things are going really good. Sun's about to fall apart. My car's about to break down. My, my house, is, there's a, a tree's gonna fall on my house in the hurricane or something. Like Susie and I were driving down uh, the connecting road that goes to, our, uh, to our, our little dirt road where we live on. And, uh, and there are like a tons of trees in like these houses on this connector road. And we drove by yesterday. I was like, Susie, look at the people. Like this road was full of oak trees, like full of it from every yard had probably 10 or 15 oak trees in it and we drove by one yard and literally they cut down every single tree in their yard <laughs> every single tree like two of them fell they cut down all the rest of them there's not a tree left in the yard man and I and Susie goes I bet what they said is like we ain't having another tree fall on our place at all we're cutting them all out there are stumps everywhere I'm like that's just and and here's the deal because you're like oh, we made it past this one but we won't make it past the next one I wonder if we're careful like have you have you thought about how often how often do you keep a journal of all that God has done in your life because I know this that for me I can remember all the bad stuff but sometimes I fail to remember all the good stuff I, I fail to remember that stuff and, and, and Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 lets us know guard your heart Above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. The, the idea of, is like, don't forget. Because the, the word forget is shakah. Shakah means to forget or to cease to care about something. It's not just a, lap, a lapse of memory. It says, guard your heart. And then it says in that first one, it says, guys, don't forget. Don't forget. And how many of you are forgetful? I mean, if somebody's forgetful and they didn't raise their hand, would you nudge them now and let them know that they, they forgot to raise their hand? That was what it was. They just forgot. They didn't know that we were talking about them. Like some people are just forgetful. And so what we have to do, if you're forgetful, how many of you put notes in your phone to remind you of things? Oh, you, you do that all the time. Here, here's what I didn't realize. like, like we have the, the little Google, the mini Google Home, and I had to reset it because we got a new internet uh, at, at home, and I had to reset it. And then it starts going through all these things. It's like, would you like to set a reminder? I was like, what? What is this crazy stuff? And I was like, yes, yeah, set, set an alarm for an hour from now. And like an hour later, like this alarm just, bam, bam. Like, oh, shut up. I was like, I'll never forget anything again, except I'll probably forget to tell the Google Home to actually do it. And, and then I'll just forget that. But <coughs> forgetting means it's not just a lapse of memory. And here's what this word implies here. 
The children of Israel didn't forget by a lapse of memory. They forgot on purpose. I, I wonder how many of us have forgotten on purpose, but wanted people to think that we just had a lapse of memory. We're like, no, I didn't call you back. I, I forgot to call you back. You didn't forget to call them back. You didn't call them back because you didn't want to. Like, how many have ever done that before? Like, oh, I'm, 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 I just slipped my mind. Just slipped my mind. Why did this slip your mind? You didn't want to. And that's what this is talking about. Sometimes in God's blessing, we choose to forget all that he's done. The word is crucial because it implies intentional memory loss. And God calls us to remember him daily. So I want to give you something, a tool. I want to give you a tool to remember God daily. To, to remember God doing something. Think about this. Um, I, I know this, that when we moved into this building, when we moved into this building uh, about, so I guess it's been about 10 years ago now, 11 years ago now, I remember us like going, God, I don't even know if we can do this. Um, I remember marching down from the Italian club and gum, coming into this building and praying in this building when there were just, literally just studs on the walls. There was, it was still purple and green. And I, I remember it and we're like, and I was like, God, there's no way we'll ever move into this building. And, 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 then, and then we got into the building and, and we had no money to renovate the building. We're like, okay, God, we, we've got to raise like a quarter of a million dollars to renovate the building and we have four months to do it. And like God was like, okay, do it. And then six, uh, six years ago, we went to purchase this building. Some of you may have been here when we went to purchase this building. I remember sending out an email to everybody saying, guys, should we purchase the building or move? And overwhelmingly, everyone at Relevant Church said, we should stay here. And I said, okay, well, this is what it's gonna cost. And and I've told this story a hundred times, but, but I think when I was talking about remembering, I, I sometimes forget how God showed up in the past. I remember it was May, and we had to raise money before August to buy the building. It was May. Does that, the, the, I don't know if that rings a bell, but a lot of you leave during the summer, like you go on vacation. And, 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 and like, you're not, you're not here. And I was like, yeah, we've got to raise money to buy a building, but we've got to do it during May, June, July, because August, we've got to actually be ready to buy the building. And I know that the owner thought we would never raise the money. And I remember hearing people having garage sales to sell stuff so that they could give toward what God was doing here. Some of you are here now and you've given your life to Jesus because of an investment somebody made 10 years ago. And some of you 10 years ago literally are here and you received Jesus because somebody 10 years before that made another investment to launch it. And sometimes we just forget. And it's good to remember. I remember that God just showed up. How many of you have used GPS this week? How many of you used GPS this week on your phone? How many of you, after the GPS was over, thanked the GPS for getting you where you were going? Because without it, you would have been totally, totally lost. You're like, thank you, GPS. You're so, like the little nice English lady who told you, turn right in 5.5 miles or whatever. And, like, and you turned and you're like, it was great. Now, if you're like my family, my wife never hits go. I don't know why. But I say, hey, babe, find this address. She looks up the address, and then she proceeds to be the voice to tell me when I'm supposed to turn. <laughs> we have had opportunities because of that, where she's like, you were supposed to turn. I was like, the little lady tells me a half a mile before I'm supposed to turn, not like 3.2 seconds before I turn. And I got to get over three lanes. I'm like, baby, just, uh, so now when she puts the address, says, please push the button, go, please push go, just push go. Just, I don't want to hear you. I want to hear her. I like her voice. It's very soothing and calming, and I know where I'm supposed to go. It's not screaming in my ear, you are supposed to turn. <laughs> I love you, honey. It's the truth. 
If I am lying, I am dying. That has happened a dozen times at a minimum, at a minimum. But I wonder if we ever thank the GPS. No, we like, no, we just assume that, no, that we just got there. Where you are today is a direct cause because God got you where you are today. Never forget where he brought you. So today I, wanna, I want you to download something. I told you to download the Relevant Church app. I want you to get back on your phone. I want you to download another app. And, it, and it's free. Don't do the paid version. Just do the free version. I hate, I hate when they bait and switch you and they're like, now it's $19.99. I don't want to pay $19. I just want the free one. This is a free one. They have a free version of it. It is literally called My Diary. And it's a journal with a lock. And here's what I want it to be. I want it to be your daily thankful journal. I just want you daily, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, you can recap yesterday or today. But here's what the app looks like. Here's what the app looks like. Go to, go, go to either your, uh, the Google Play or go to the App Store and download My Diary Journal with a Lock. There is a free version of it on there. So don't, don't, don't pay for it, okay? But here's what you can do. What if over the next 30 days, we're starting this the first week of November, what if by the end of Thanksgiving, you literally had 30 daily entries of thankfulness to God, of remembering what God had done for you that day? You see how, you see how that would shift the way that we think and the way that we live. I wanna challenge us this week to start today. At the end of today, I want you to say, Thanks, God, for doing this. I had one of those moments on Thursday of this past week. Um, many of you were praying for my mom who had a uh, hiatal hernia. She's had a hiatal hernia for a very long time, and it was very large. And uh, she's been waiting six months to get this surgery. Um, some of you may not know, my mom has COPD as well. Uh, she also has fibrosis of the lungs, so she has a hard time breathing. That's why you don't see her sometimes at church. And I know she's watching at home. Mom, I love you. I didn't ask you if I could share your story, but I am anyway. Because um, she, can't, she can't spank me now. Um, so that's why I, she used to beat me. She did. It's true. I'm not, mad, I'm not mad about it. I probably needed it and needed it a lot. Um, so I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. Um, but... Um, it's a little odd when, uh, when your mom is going in for surgery, but you're also her pastor. So you gotta kinda put on a pastor hat, but in your heart, you have anxiety as a son. And it was a really odd thing that I was walking through that day. Because I'm, I'm, I'm driving to the hospital, and I'm like, God, you gotta take care of my mom. I need you to show up for my mom. And then I got to the hospital and I've got to put on pastor and go, God's got this. Let's pray. And like, and, and in, in my gut, it's like, I'm having this torn thing of like, God, show up, man. And then I had to leave the hospital while she was mid-surgery because I had to go do a funeral for a family. And the whole time I'm at that funeral, I'm like, God, you got to show up. God, I got to get a word from my dad. I got to get a word from my dad that everything's okay. And I remember as soon as I was done, I had just finished reciting the, um, reciting the 23rd Psalm for this family at a graveside. And my phone goes off and dad goes, she's out of surgery. Everything's good. And I went, thanks, God. I wasn't there. Amen is right, Mawson. Amen is right. And, 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 I, and I realized, God, you sometimes push us into seasons where we have to remember. So the second thing that remembering does, remembering removes the danger of self-reliance because I know this, that a lot of us like to be self-reliant. We don't want to depend on anybody else. We're very independent. We want to depend on ourselves. We pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And, and here's the problem with that. When we do that, what we do is we rely on ourselves and not God. And look what Deuteronomy 8, 14 says. This is Moses talking again. He says, don't become proud at that time, the time of plenty. That's what he's talking about. 
and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Do you know what 40 years in the wilderness can do? It can forget where you came from. 40 years in the wilderness, you can forget what you used to have a problem with. When you've been wandering 40 years in the wilderness, and then now, say you're five years removed from the wilderness experience, and now you're living in the land of Canaan, where literally everything is plentiful, everything is wonderful, and it's great, and God has shown up, and you can forget. Again, you can become proud. Forgetting God isn't just memory loss or a memory lapse. It's a heart condition that puts us at the center of our universe and not God. The word, the word proud in Hebrew in this passage is the word gava. Gava means it signifies arrogance and self-exaltation. That's what gava means. And Moses said, don't gava. Don't be gava. Don't be self-reliant. Don't be arrogant in what you're doing. Realizing that the term warns us that pride leads to loss of awareness regarding our dependence on God and his grace. It's just a loss of awareness. Do you know this? I don't think that Satan really has to get us to completely turn our back on God. And, and, and I've used this illustration before, and it's just so good. It's like, it's the idea of navigating at one degree off of center. If you navigate your life one degree off of center, it's not very, it's not a big deal the first step that you take. It's not a big deal. You can still reach over and grab where you're supposed to be. But when you're a thousand steps one degree off from where you were supposed to be, you can't even see it anymore. And what he's saying, that's what pride does. Pride and self-absorption, what it does is it gets us to just be off one degree from what God's word says. When we realize that self-reliance becomes pride and pride becomes forgetfulness and soon we're living as if we don't need him at all. I believe we live in a world that does not need God right now. I believe we live in a country that has this idea that we do not need God anymore. We're self-reliant. Look what we have done. Look what we have accomplished. Not realizing that everything that we accomplished could, have been, could be gone in an instant. And I know that many people here at Relevant have really experienced some of that. And like the, the homes that they built and the stuff that they had was gone and literally less than an hour or two when a hurricane breezes through and floods everything out. And we realize, is that all there is? Think about this. How many have ever seen a sports team that's been undefeated before? Anybody ever watched a sport? And then they go to one game that they were supposed to win, and then they completely lose. I believe it's about to happen to the Hoosiers. I'm just, I'm, my wife is an Indiana Hoosier. I, they are riding high. And I'm just like, guys, enjoy it while you can because it is about to come crashing down. And, and, and if you're an IU fan, hey, celebrate it. You got, you're 9-0 right now. Like, but, but like, they're kind of like other teams that we have seen before who are like, we should be number one. They're like, no, you shouldn't. You don't play the same caliber of teams. I'm sorry. It's not, it's, it's not the same. But like people, we get undefeated and people think, we're this, we're this, we're this. And then all of a sudden, humility, they get humbled by a team that should not humble them. Anybody watch the, the Vandy Alabama game this year? <laughs> I mean, there is no reason that Alabama should lose to Vanderbilt. No reason. They're not the same team. But when you think, that's why I love what scripture says pride goes before destruction in a haughty spirit or an inflated ego before a fall. Like we've all seen it happen. Psalm 103, 2 says, let all that I am praise the Lord. And here's why. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. Do you know, according to a Harvard statistic, it says people who focus solely on self-achievement rather than community or gratitude are more likely to experience burnout, 
increased stress, less satisfaction in life. So if you're experiencing right now burnout, increased stress, or less satisfaction in life, it is probably time for you and I to evaluate what are we focused on right now in my life. Are we focused on what I'm doing? Or am I focused on something bigger? Here's a practical takeaway. I gave you one earlier. I want to give you a second one. How many of you use your phone and set alarms on your phone? How many of you set alarms on your phone? How many of you had an alarm go off this morning? How many of you were grateful for that extra hour of sleep? Yes, we were. Praise God, it was so good. It was glorious. So, I want you to get out your phone. Yep, you're going to get your phone out. And we're using our phone a lot today. Get your phone out. I want you to go to your alarm settings. I want you to set a daily alarm. How many of you have a time during the day where you are less thankful? How many of you have a time? Like, I don't know, it could be midday, you're like, it could be like four o'clock when somebody comes rolling in your office and they need something. It's just gonna take a minute. It takes three hours. You're like, I don't wanna do this anymore. All right, wherever you find that your day becomes the most unthankful, here's what I want you to do. I want you to set an alarm. I want you to set an alarm. If that's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, if that's first thing in the morning, I don't care what it is. But here's what I want your alarm to say. Thank God alarm. I want, I want you to set a thank God alarm. God, I'm just going to thank you. And I want you to take 30 seconds out of your day to thank God. To thank God for what you're unthankful for. Because I want you to remember, like, I want us to move into Thanksgiving remembering that we have so much. So much to be thankful for and grateful for. And sometimes you got to set an alarm. you got to remind yourself because you're forgetful. So every time that alarm goes off, you go, oh my gosh, there goes that. I want you to make it an obnoxious alarm too. I want you to go, bat, 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 bat. Like one that wakes you up. Not the one that's like, mm, honey, get up. Like I know people who set alarms that are like, I'm like, why are you always late? Well, my alarm didn't go off. No, it went off. It was just a stupid alarm. You have to make an annoying alarm to wake you up. And, and you got to move it away from you far enough where you can't hit snooze all the time. Because some of you have been living in snooze mode for way too long. And wake up. Be grateful for what God has done. And the last one, remembering builds faith for the future. Here's what Moses said. He said in verse 16 to 18, it says, he fed you with manna. He reminded them. He fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. In other words, it was, it was heavenly food. It was like dropping out of the sky manna. He did this to humble you and to test you for your own good. He did all of this so you'd never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and my own energy. And then he says in verse 18, remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. The word remember is the Hebrew word zakar. The Hebrew word zakar means it emphasizes consciously reflecting on God's past provisions as actions in our lives. In other words, what he's saying there is he says, remember. Remember isn't just about the past. It's about building our faith for the future. Here's, uh, there's a song that we sing uh, here a lot at Relevant that talks, that, that has this idea behind it that if he did it then, he can do it again. How many of you know the song, Do It Again? Like, he'll do it again. Like, if he did it then, he can do it again. But sometimes we forget what he did before. And so what, God, what Moses says is, you need to set up reminders in your life. And so I, I, I got something that, um, and, and I don't know if, if you might want to do this or not, but, but I think Moses did something like this. Moses actually, and uh, um, Eric kind of talked about this earlier it says Moses built altars there were altars all over the wilderness every place that they stopped where God showed up significantly they built an altar they built an altar so they could thank God but they also built an altar because it stayed there so that the next time somebody passed by they could remember it they could remember there's two different things there are mausoleums that are in cemeteries. They remember the death of someone. There are monuments 
that are found and placed in positions where you can remember what happened there so you never forget. You can either build a mausoleum in your life where all the dead things were, or you can build a monument and say, this is where life began again. This is where God showed up again. And here's what they end up being like. You go, oh man, when I lost that job, that seemed like a bad idea. But then you go, but then God, God gave me another job that was better than the first one. And I'm gonna build a marker. And then you go, man, I, I, I lost that relationship, man. And I felt like I was all alone. And you say, but... But God provided a different relationship, and maybe it was a stronger relationship with him. And here's what I want you to know. You're over here now. You're over here now. But do you know what you sometimes need to do? You need to take a walk down memory lane. And go, God, every one of those things was a stepping stone to where you are leading me. And I saw you in every step that I took. But it's more than just you. I want you to think about this. When you start leaving markers like that, your kids who follow you go, Dad and Mom did this. Dad and Mom stepped there. Dad and Mom stepped there. And it gives them a path that they can walk on, that they can see. And then you can take them back down that memory and say, I know you weren't born yet, but I want you to know what happened here because what happened here took me there. And that's the path that I want you to take. That's what Moses said. Remembering, remembering. It's not just about the past, it's about the future. Look what Psalm 77 says, and I'm gonna be done. It says, I said to you, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. This is a song he's like, God's turned his back on me. But then, but then, don't miss verse 11. I recalled all that you had done, O Lord. I remembered your wonderful deeds of long ago. Because can I tell you, when you get over here, there's going to be another one that's not going to go right. You're going to be here and you're like, oh, now I got to jump. I don't even know how to jump. Where am I going to jump into? And then you got to go, but wait, God showed up there. He showed up there. He showed up there. You go, huh, well, maybe. Maybe I, maybe I, maybe I can jump. Maybe I can jump. Because I know that God showed up there, so I know he'll show up here. You see, the reason why we need these markers in our lives is because we need to know. Don't get stuck in verse 10 when God placed verse 11 there, where he says, I said, this is my fate. Oh, this is it's my lot in life. God turned his back on me. No, he didn't. He just has a new plan for you. Romans 5, 3 and 4 says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of what? Salvation. Salvation. Every moment we see God's faithfulness in our struggles, we place a stepping stone, a future hope for someone. Some of you, you know how much these stepping stones were? I picked them up, picked them up at Home Depot this week. You know how much they were? 58 cents. Some of you may need to go buy about $10 worth of stepping stones. And you may need to, to write on them what God has done. What if, what if this, this next week you got 30 stepping stones and every day you thanked God for what that step that he allowed you to take this week and pretty soon you realize in the backyard or in your front yard you had a whole path of where God showed up and every time somebody comes over, they go, why you got writing all over your stepping stones? You got all that. Let me, let me tell you about the journey of what God showed me over the last 30 days. When I realized he showed up, I didn't think he showed up. As I don't know what you're dealing with, but I know this. All of us need to practice remembering when. Because where you are today is not where God wants you to stay. And where you are today is not where you've been. 
Maybe God has you right here today because it's your first step. And your first step is, I've ignored God my whole life. I've been doing things my way. And today God's saying, you need to take your first step, and that's a step of faith. Of stop believing in yourself and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation. That's your first step. God can't direct your life if he's not Lord of your life. He has to be Lord first and then he directs. And I believe this, for some of you today, he directed you to this church, to this moment, because God wanted to talk to you today about how much he loves you and how much he cares for you. And how he died for you and sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the ultimate price so you could have salvation. Don't miss that today. Start there today. And for others of you, you need to start laying some markers down. You need to start laying some markers down. Say, God, I'm thankful. You need to start having a journal. You need to start setting an alarm. And then you need to start writing it down. Okay, God, I'm going to see this every day when I walk outside. I'm going to know that you showed up. I'm setting a reminder stone. Not just for me, but for anybody who comes after me. Let's pray. God, we love you. God, I pray that today you would help us to, God, not just say that, God, we believe in you. Not just say that, God, we want, we want you to show up in our lives. But, God, I pray that today you would show up and that, God, we would turn over our lives. I pray for, for someone here today who has not trusted you as their personal Savior, that they would take the first step and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know my sin separates me from you, but, God, I want to take my step toward you today. And I want to ask you to forgive me of my sins, to come into my heart change my life today replace my sin with salvation and God I receive what you have for me today it's in Christ's name, amen guys if any of you made that decision today I want to tell you I don't want to embarrass you at all but I want to pray for you and I want to help you take your next best step and so what, what I would encourage you to do is if you'll fill out that connection card that you found in your seat in front of you um, you guys can let us know the decision that you made today and we would love to help you with that if you need prayer today after this service there'll be somebody over here at our prayer wall they'll pray with you thank you guys for being here don't miss next week we love you guys god bless you guys let's stand and finish worshiping today god bless you guys